Sick. Maybe like this hand up? Yeah, that's good. Lovely. Lovely. Hi, it's a wrap, baby. Let's go. It's a reminder that London can be quite pretty sometimes. It's a fine Saturday morning here in London. It is getting cold, even though it does look very sunny and warm. So order of the day is I'm gonna go get some coffee. I'm gonna get some coffee beans for home as well. Then I'm gonna come home and do some sketches, do some planning and pre-prod for some shoots I wanna do in the next couple of days, in the next couple of months. I've got some really big ones coming up for my exhibition, so stay tuned for that. Then I've got a couple of shoots. But first, let's get changed. So I'm actually gonna go for my Jack Moo sweater as my top. I'm a huge fan of Jack Moo or Jack Moos. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, I've been a huge fan of him since 2015. This is from last year's winter collection, mohair sweater, very comfortable. I especially love the length of it because it's not too long and it's not too short. It sits perfectly at the waist. It's not too cropped either. Fantastically crafted, very simple, minimal, and just timeless. And for those extra cold days, even has a matching balaclava. The bottoms are these jeans from Jaded London. They are really baggy, they're really oversized, but I especially love the color of it. It's very green. It's definitely more green than blue. Huge, huge fan, especially because right now I'm really feeling white and green as a combo. And for the shoes, I'm gonna go for Doc Martens today, just because it can get really wet and cold in London in the winter. So for me, I'm always gonna go for combat boots or Timberlands or anything that can withhold the weather. So yeah, today, Doc Martens. Then to kind of cap it all off, I've got this hat from Carhartt to kind of complete the green and white combo. And then finally, I've got the scarf from Acne Studios. And that's pretty much the look. Thank you. So I've come up with this idea for a photo shoot, um, for a bunch of photo shoots actually, where I really wanna do miniature people interacting with a giant world. So kind of like Ariete and the Borrowers, Gulliver's Travels, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And I just think it'd be really fun. So I've done a couple of mock-up sketches for the concepts. This one in particular is really fun just because I get to do this cool reflection thing that's going on in the billiard ball. So for that specific shot, I've rented this 11 millimeter fisheye lens from TT Artisan. I've seen this lens kind of do the rounds on TikTok, Reels, and YouTube, so I figured I'd give it a go. I don't own a fisheye lens, which is why I used Fat Llama. Fat Llama is an amazing platform, especially in the UK, where you can rent out your own equipment, and it's especially handy if you need a piece of kit. They've got lenses, camera bodies, lights, and it can be anyone and everyone. So you can put your own kit on there to rent it out. And it's just a nice revenue stream that you could have on the side. So if you're interested, be sure to check out the discount code in the description below. But yeah, TT Artisan Fish Island. So I'm excited to use this guy. I've got my friend Milo coming in. So it's gonna be really cool, really fun. I'm excited. So I just did a shoot with my dear friend Milo. I saw you in Justice League. I was oh, yeah. like, yo! <laughs> I was, it was like a split little cameo, and I was like, that looks like Milo. And yeah. then I legit messaged him, was like, yo, bro, are you in Justice League? He was like, yeah, actually. I can't believe you spotted that. That was the Snyder's cut. Yeah, legit. Yeah. I was just like, yo, that Asian guy looks sick. And then I was like, wait a minute, I know him. Always sick and pleasure to work Thank you for having there. me. Uh, be sure to follow him. His social's on screen now, you know? all the usual shenanigans. All right, so the first shoot with Milo is now done. Mia and Julie are on their way. I just wanted to share my thoughts on the TT Artisan fisheye lens. I think it did its job, it served its purpose, but 
the fact that it was manual focus meant that I had to kind of readjust my workflow a little bit because I like to shoot really fast. I almost have this kind of e-com approach for whenever I'm shooting anything simpler. So every time the flash hits or every time I hit the shutter button, I like my models to change their pose completely, to move, to give me variations. And because of that, in between each shot, I would lose focus. And naturally that would mean changing my settings a little bit, shooting on a higher aperture, less shallow depth of field. And these aren't necessarily pitfalls of the lens itself and more down to you just have to readjust your workflow, shoot on a slower pace, on a more methodical kind of approach. But as a fisheye, I think, again, I got the shot that I needed. But frankly, I wish it was more warped. I wish it was more fisheye. Now, I don't know if that's something that I'm doing wrong. So please let me know in the comments below because I want to keep on using fisheyes. But it didn't feel as kind of crazy round as I thought it would. But I wanted it to be extra fisheye, extra warped. So I actually had to go in a post and kind of do that myself and warp it even more. But I did love the fact that it was a full frame fisheye that I didn't have to go to APS-C mode. But yeah, overall, it did what it had to do. And I guess I can't complain about that. But yeah, that's a review segment done. On to the next shoot. Shocked expression. Love that. Love that. Sick. Sick. What's your favorite Ghibli film? That's a hot one. Oh! Okay, Kiki's good, you know. Fair, that's fair, that's fair. We are now officially in the editing stage and I'm just compositing everything together, fine tuning all the little details, making it all blended and look good. Then I can start color grading. And honestly, I would say this is my favorite part of the whole creative process because this, the editing stage is where everything kind of comes to life. This is where the story begins to take form and I start to see what I originally saw in my mind and from the concept to the final result, this is where it all comes to life. And I obviously love the photo shoot process, like meeting new people, connecting with the models and stuff, but editing, this is where everything happens. It's like Star Wars was saved in the edit. This is where all the images begin to become what they were meant to be. But yeah, for the image now, I just need to finish the composite, do a color grade, give it the whole little Seb Zaver treatment, and then bang, finish result, baby. Let's go. Now, some of y'all may have noticed that I actually did a third shoot with the amazing Julie. Now, if you want to see her concept, as well as Milo's and a couple of other people, be sure to head over to my Instagram to see the making of, and of course, the final results. And that pretty much brings our video to a close. Now, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, this was the first time I've ever done a vlog type of video. And it's funny because I started this channel with the intention of it being vlogs and behind the scenes and days of the life. But I figured if you didn't know who I was and what I did, you wouldn't really care about my vlogs which is why the last couple of videos have been topic driven, setups, but it's been a couple months since I started the channel. So I figured now is the time to finally do what I started out to do. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please consider leaving a like, hitting the subscribe button. And as always, I've been your boy Seb. Peace.